I got AI to do my job. This was one less thing I needed to do in my stressful life as a fractional CFO. See, every month I need to explain to my clients what's happening in their business. And it usually involves an email like this. Hi John, please see attached CFO report for your company. And here's a quick summary of our financial performance. Then I break things down and such. And finally, I attach some snapshots. But here's the deal. That email takes me at least 10 minutes just to type up. Oh, and then actually getting these insights? Probably another 20 minutes of data analysis. So I sought out to see if I could get AI to do it for me. And I was amazed. It pretty much could. And it started with me getting this data to AI. And I wasn't really sure how to do this. I first tried ChatGPT's voice command. Prepare a CFO report for my client. Sorry, mate. Can't help you with that one. It wasn't as cool as I looked. Oh, and Siri and Alexa, that was a lost cause. Hey Siri, write me a CFO report that makes me sound smart for my client. Sorry, I wasn't able to locate that. So then I thought I would type it up, but typing that was really time consuming. This was the whole point of using AI. And then I remembered that ChatGPT knew how to read images. So if I send ChatGPT just the two right snapshots, it can do my job for me. So I tested it out with these two dashboards and it worked. With just two pictures, I had a data assistant and now I just needed to write the perfect prompt to have it sound just like me. But first, you're probably wondering how I created these two dashboards. Well, it's actually pretty simple. Well, I actually have separate videos available on both of these that you can find right over here. But let me just share some commentary to refresh your memory on how exactly I built this. So here we have the KPI dashboard. And what I did was I first just changed the background color to give it a nice little background on the top. And then I entered in a special font called Poppins to allow me to create this title. I now have this custom shape that I added as well. And I changed the outline for the weight as such. Now I named this October. You notice that I have a little bit of a uh, quotation here because if I remove that quotation, watch what happens. It'll change the actual format. Excel will automatically convert it to date, which we don't want. Okay. Then I just added another shape over here. This time it was a blue shape and it wasn't as thick as this one. I just held down shift to create all of that. Okay, now the way that I created these KPI boxes, so I just selected all of these cells and then I created an outside border by clicking this button over here. All right, then I created a thin line here and I just shaded that in to our blue. Now I have this as a merge cell called revenue. This is a merge cell for the actual value. This showcases the difference compared to September 2024. Another merge cell here and a merge cell here for the percentage difference. Then I just copy and pasted this information to all of these other boxes and I just shrunk down these columns over here. And that's how I built this KPI dashboard. Now, if you wanna know how I built the budget versus actual dashboard, I'll show you that in a sec. But before I do, you can actually grab both of these templates in dozens more with the model Wiz plugin. So what's really cool is that once you have the template selected, you can click on download template and then you'll get this pop-up where you can customize the dates and you can change the specific values. So let's just call this EBITDA instead of net income. And then when you click on download, all of your custom edits will be saved and shot directly into your Excel file as such. Now, this isn't some random tool out there. This is actually our tool that we built after hundreds of hours, carefully crafting the best dashboards. And you can get access to all of these directly in your Excel file with just a few clicks of a button. We have tons of new features in the pipeline, like connecting your data to your accounting software and building incredible incredible word class, forecasts, and financial models. You can check all that out at modelwiz.com. And now let's go over how to build this budget first actuals template. All right, so for this template, I did something similar where I have this title as such and the actual period. Then I have budget, actuals, the dollar actual, and the percentage actual. So I have these important KPIs. This is pretty much a summarized PL. And then I have cash flows and headcount as well. So I entered in the budget values and the actual values. And then for the variance, I took actual minus budget for revenue and any income accounts like net operating income, net income, net other income, and so forth. The reason for that is I wanna show positive variances if it's a good variance and negative variances if it's a bad variance. So I did the opposite for expense accounts. So as you can see over here, I took 
our budget value minus our actual value because we had more expenses. I want to show that as a bad thing, which is negative. So that's how I populated this over here. And then for the percentage column, what I did was I just took this amount divided by this amount. But here's the key. I did two other things. I wrapped this around an if error statement in case we have a zero, we don't want to return an error. So it'll just return zero. And then I also put this absolute. Watch what happens when I remove this absolute over here. Actually, as you can see, the absolute right now isn't set up properly. So I'm going to instead put the absolute over here and then I'll click on enter. So this is now correct. I have a positive variance, which is, should be a positive percentage. When I undo that, this shows as negative because a positive divided by a negative will get me a negative. Okay, now the last thing I wanna show you on how I built this dashboard, these donut charts over here, the way that I did that was I created this section here. The way donut charts work is you in essence need at least two series, one series to be shaded in, the other series to not be shaded in. But you'll notice that I have green over here for positive values and blue for negative values. So what I did was I created this formula that said, if this value is positive, give me the amount here and the inverse of the amount over here. If it's negative, well then give me the amount here and the inverse as such. So this will allow us to then create a donut chart with all four of these series. Whenever this changes, watch what happens. If I just change it to a minus 5%, you'll notice that this changes to blue and the information just flipped over here. So this section now over here, I just populated the actual text that went inside the donut chart. So I wrapped this around the text function so that we could actually pull it in as a percentage. And then I said, if it's a positive variance, write the word savings after a space. Otherwise, write the words miss. So again, if I change this to minus 5%, this goes to minus 5% miss as such. So everything is entirely dynamic. Now that I have my dashboards ready, I just need to design the perfect prompt. And for that, I have the perfect person to get in touch with, Nicholas Boucher, who's the leading expert in AI in finance. Nicholas, give us a hand. Hi Josh, thank you that you're asking me this question because I really believe in finance, we should use AI much more. And the easiest tool to use AI is using ChatGPT or Claude or Gemini. And with your example, where we want to replace a part of the task that us in finance, we have to do almost every month or every week, which is write commentaries. This is a really good example because you can see that how the LLM can write faster than us and also better. So let's take your example. So here I have the first dashboard where we see the results for October 2024. And here is the other dashboard where we see the budget versus actuals. And what we did is screenshots of these two dashboards to have this as image. Now let's go into ChatGPT to see how we can use this information to write our summary for our client. So now I am in ChatGPT. And in ChatGPT, for my prompting, I will use my framework, which is the CSI and FBI. If you don't know my framework, well, CSI is for context, specific, and instruction. So here, I'm going to show you after, in our case, how we are going to use that. So FBI is for format, blueprint, and identity. So now I am inside ChatGPT, and let's use the CSI FBI to prompt ChatGPT. So the context, I am a fractional CFO, and then what is specific, what is our problem? I need to draft the monthly performance review email to my client called John. And we say that it's a SaaS company because it helps also to improve the output. Now the instruction for the eye of CSI is help me draft a really short email because we know people don't really like long emails summarizing the performance. And now that I have the CSI, I will start the FBI part where I will fine tune the prompt by explaining what type of format do I expect. So here I will say, use bullet points and short direct sentences. And uh, I will even be more specific saying, present the key figures in a clear and concise, concise manner where each figure is immediately followed by a brief explanation of the cause or contributing factors. Finish with points of attention and recommendations. So now that we have this, what we can even do is the eye of FBI is the identity, draft it 
like a top 1% fractional CFO. And then I will add the two image so that are here. And I will also say use the two attachments. So to recap, we have the CSI FBI with the C, the context, I am a fractional CFO. What is specific, we need to draft the monthly performance review email to the client called John. And the instruction help me draft a really short email summarizing the performance. And then we have the FBI part where we are going to be specific about the format here and the blueprint also to finish with point of attentions and recommendations. And then the I of FBI is identity. We are going to say to draft this like a top 1% fractional CFO. So let's see what ChatGPT can do for us. So we see that our email starts to be written. And like I wanted, we have short explanation about the reason for the changes. So you see, for example, here, increase in infrastructure. And then like I wanted, I have the points of attention and the recommendation. So overall, if I reduce a bit the size, we have our email here, which is quite short. If I want, I can also ask to reduce this to have less KPIs. And what I really like is to have the point of attentions and the recommendations. So you see, with the right prompt and with just feeding ChatGPT with these two screenshots, then I can make ChatGPT write for me. And then I just need to review the same way I will do with somebody from my team. So here, if you are asking about confidentiality, well, I am using ChatGPT team. So I have a contract with ChatGPT and they say they don't train on uh, my data. So it's like using a cloud solution. So Josh, what do you think about this? Is it something that is going to help you? Is it something that is going to help your audience? It will. Yes. Here, Josh, for you, your email in a few minutes. I hope it helps you. I'm so amazed that AI can now do my job. And also a bit terrified that AI can now do my job. Does this mean I'm going to get replaced? Are my clients going to fire me? Well, for now, I'm not so worried about that. See, there's a lot that AI can't do. It can't get on the phone with one of my clients. It can't show up at a board meeting and present figures to investors or the board of directors or help the CEO better run his or her business with advice that oftentimes numbers just can't even tell, which is why it's so important to always upskill yourself. Stay up to date with what you can do and keep refining your craft. Oh, and network with others. That's why I'm so excited to tell you about my new fractional CFO community. Come and swap ideas with us, learn from other fractional CFOs as well as myself on how to best sell your services as a fractional CFO. Oh, and don't worry, if you don't have your own firm, we'll soon be opening up our community to finance and accounting professionals in just a few months. Check it out at yourcfoguy.com slash community. Oh, and if you want to upskill yourself and create really good forecasts, you can always check out this video right here. I'm Josh, your CFO guy, and I'll catch you next time.